Scott Brown here, and today's exciting episode, we cover this old floor with a new floor. The old floor is damaged, the new floor is going to make it look like a thing of beauty. Oh, oh shit, <laughs> the media mate. <laughs> YouTube. Oh true, yeah. oh, you're a YouTuber. Yeah, what, yeah, what's yeah. your one? Uh, Scott Brown Carpentry. So we're going back to Ellerslie today. Now we uh, repaired a floor at Ellerslie. I can't remember, it might have been last year. We needed to reinforce that floor and rather than reinstating it with the traditional timber that was already there, we just put plywood there. And the reason for that is because we're going to put a flooring overlay over the whole thing. So in order to do this flooring we need to take the skirting off. So our walls were purposely unfinished. They got their first coat on just to seal them. So we're popping the skirting off and we can sand all the way up to the, the wall and also get the flooring in there. So I've made this off cut here as a bit of a guide because we need to cut the bottom of the door jam. We obviously can't take the door jam off so we make a gap from the door jam to the floor. The whole reason that I got the sander this morning and all these sanding discs is because we need to take the layer of varnish that's on the floor off and that is so when we put our new flooring over the top it can stick to it we're going to glue the new floor oh, also the sander um, i'm hopefully going to take out this big hump that's in the floor so once we've punched all the nail holes and got this hump out of it then we just take all the varnish off and then Pido and i can start putting the floor down More, Seem to have a problem. The sandpaper just ripped off and it took some of the rubber with it. I don't think that's supposed to happen. Oh, I talked to the guys at the higher place. They reckon it's because of the nails. There's definitely no nails sticking up. But obviously as you sand the different layers, you expose the nail more. So, I mean, that's, that could be it. That could be one thing. Or like a gouge on the timber. There's no gouge on the timber. Maybe that's what did it. Either way, they're gonna bring a replacement. I'm gonna punch some nails in the meantime.
So the wood we're using today is an engineered oak and it kind of looks like plywood when you look on the edge here. The top layer of this plywood is the oak finish and it's finished. It's got the varnish on it and sealed so no nails are going through the top of this. Um, any nails we do are in areas that will be covered by skirting or in the tongue here we kind of do like a secret nail on a 45 degree angle through there and I've got the 18 gauge nailer much thinner nails than your regular 16 gauge finishing guns. So uh, that's the method of operation here. This is actually called naked oak and it's got nothing to do with clothing you know we're, we're not going to uh, change our uh, attire in order to install this but uh, the reason they call it naked oak is because it's not free well to a certain extent there's no big knots everywhere. trying to coordinate the different shades of timber and there's something that won't catch the eye. There's sort of darker shades and lighter shades. And it's kind of a lighter shade. That, yeah. I haven't hung out with you in a while, so I, I forget that you the camera bloody follows you around. <laughs> Where have you been? I've been hiding at the big job, man. The big job, man. Eh? Yeah, yeah, yeah. My diesel uh, reseller, bro. Yeah, it's uh, two dollars per liter. Oh, hold up. My back. Ta-da! What is that? Uh, RNL build, building will know what that is. Let's check it out. So it's uh, basically a square laser, my man. So you put mm. that in the corner, wherever you want to get a square, yeah. and it shoots a line this way, that way, and a 90. Mm. So is that <laughs> for inside work? Uh, inside and outside. I haven't even used that man because I gotta read this bloody thing. Look at the book on that! <laughs> <laughs> Should we get a coffee? Yeah, about. <laughs> it was. Good to see you, Cameron. Good to see you too. Is that us emptying the first bucket already? Pretty quick, eh? Might need to grab the other one too because it might not be enough for this line. Yeah. So it's a rapid cure glue, two to three hours. So this part here is pretty solid now. Yep, keep going. So this area is an example of why um, putting a floor on top of a floor was a good idea. This bathroom tile level is now pretty much level with our new floor. And we've still got our little gap here. And we're putting a brass plate over there and then it'll be flat. And the carpet is also higher than the rest of the original floor. So adding this layer of flooring brings everything on the same level. Here's a tricky little area that we have to finish. So we've got this little ripping in here. We'll put that approximately there. And then we want to get the shorty in here. This one. That one needs to go like this. We try to keep the sliding to a minimum. Sometimes you can't avoid it. But you don't really want to be sliding the glue around too much. So I'm gonna put that right to the end. And then this part, this part needs to go under there. And this is like the maximum sliding 
that we're ever going to do on this job. Here we are, we've moved the fridge and we're doing the other half. This floor is feeling so, so solid, so solid. All the way through here. Why'd you do that? What do you think of gluing flooring down, bro? <laughs> Just a little bit more to go, eh, Pada? I'm happy with it, mate. It looks good. It does look good. Whee! I just want to see the bench top in and everything. Yeah, the bench top comes next week. And we're going to put these last few boards in in the morning. Oh, shorties are late. They're pretty alright, considering. You know. oh, yeah, I think you're right, eh? Look at me, buddy. Every box had like six short ones and then three long ones. So, uh... Yeah.